Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now normally you see me building or destroying things, but today something different. One of the interests I've always had is mechanical things and watches are a an example of that, fairly obviously, precise and small. Um, and it's an interest I've been looking to revive for some time. And in discussing this with uh, my father-in-law, he said, oh, you can have a look at my watch uh, because it stopped working some years ago. And um, here we are. So what we have is a Seiko 5 uh, from 1973. Uh, the date code on the back. There we are. Let's see if we can get that into focus. Uh, tell you what, let me undo the the strap a bit more and we can see a bit more. There we go. Okay, so here, let's get it up to the lens. Okay, not too visible. Uh, there we go. So 3D5, 336. Okay, so that dates it as December 1973. And it's the 5336th watch to be made in that batch. And uh, it's a, for watch nerds, it's a 6119C movement. And it's in this rather nice case. Described as water resistant, the Seiko 5, um, well, the 5 was introduced as a, as a marketing tool in 1963. And just under the uh, hour hand, it, it says 5. Um, let me see if I can just pull that out and make it a bit more visible for you. Oops, let's go that way. There we go, there's number 5. Uh, and that said to, uh, from the Seiko website, that is related to auto winding, day and date in a single window, water resistance, recessed crown, which we have. There you go, that's recessed for safety. And a durable case. Yep, stainless steel. And um, this one was in daily use until it stopped working. It's not got the original strap. This is a replacement strap, but obviously to fit. And um, yeah, it's been sat in a drawer for a long time. And you can see if I just get it in the light, well, not too much, uh, the crystal is somewhat scratched. And the body itself, well, it's been used. It was, these were described rather impolitely as a daily beater. So a daily wear. And so not a dress watch. Um, what I'm going to do is, over the next few videos, I'm going to do this in sections so as not to uh, burden you with a, a very, very long video. Um, I'm going to, today, decase it, and it's kind of a special case. It, not one a design that you see very often, perhaps not these days, um, and then we'll have a quick look inside. Um, normally you would get a case um, where you either unscrew the back or using a knife just flip it off um, or sometimes take it out through the front. But on this, what we have is um, four clips behind these little recesses and then the, the back comes off and the movement comes out completely uh, because you might be able to see, no you probably can't at this point, um, it's uh, uh, the the movement and the case aren't exactly joined. Now the reason that I'm servicing this um, is because it doesn't work. It's, uh, it's a fully automatic watch. That means that the, the crown doesn't actually uh, wind it up at all. That is purely for day and date function. Um, so inside there's a little weight that spins through wrist action, um, which winds it up using a magic, <laughs> magic fingers, they call it. And it just doesn't work at all. I don't believe uh, this has ever been serviced so in all probability, and it's been, sorry, it's been also used in some fairly grubby environments. So I guess there's been an 
what we might call an ingress of um, muck. Um, and I would also suspect, considering it's uh, 73, so it's what, 27, 47 years old, nearly 50 years old, that um, the original lubrication has dried up. And even though mainsprings do get quite tight, um, at some point they're not going to overcome friction. So the objective is to strip it down to um, you know, screws and screws and gears, uh, give everything a good clean, reassemble it, lubricate it, identify any problems that we have, and then um, deal with the case. And I've got some uh, uh, acrylic glass cleaner or polish, uh, some polywatch to uh, clean that up with, and then see what we can do with the case. Uh, now I don't want to do too much, see if we can get some of these minor scratches out. There's no massive dents, there's a, I don't know whether you can see it, there's a fairly not so good scratch there. Um, the rest of it's quite reasonable. So uh, there we are. Right, the strap itself, I say it's not original. It's not bad though. Um, I guess that was probably brushed. Um, no, it definitely was brushed, and we'll try and get that back to something like. Um, and on this, it looks like, although it's had quite a bit of wear, the outer links were brushed and the middle ones polished. So I think we can do something with that. Now, my um, background is not <laughs> watch repair. Um, this is the first watch that I've actually done. Um, and I've watched a video, so I must be an expert. No, nope, I'm going to be very careful. Um, what I've also got, um, when I take thing, taking things apart, obviously it comes apart in a sequence and there's different, different aspects to the watch that uh, you need to have. But what I've got, which is quite useful, is an ice cube tray. Um, so let me just uh, zoom out a bit. Whoops, wrong way. That can't go. Um, an ice cube tray with rubber rubber bottoms and um, that'll allow me to keep everything in sequence so the various if I'm taking um, a little section apart like the automatic wind mechanism it can go in one um, calendar works in another train of wheels and so on and so on and so on so the various bits that go together can go together right so First thing to do is to get the strap off, and that's quite uh, quite n normal in as much as there's a pin. going to do this off camera for a second right that did it just a couple of seconds um, that's kind of an indication of what we're dealing with here because it was rather gummed up so let's get the uh, get the pin out and then put it in my tub and of course I'm totally prepared and I've got everything ready not ow I just stabbed myself with my tweezers. So this is how this is exactly as it happens. There's no rehearsals. There we go. Ew, that's not nice. Let's see if we can focus on that. Hmm. Try and focus on it having it there you go that's why it wasn't coming out it's filthy all right okay so let's put the other one in the first first thing right i've got a little i'm going to keep the um strap separate i've got a little little pot for that oops it's got caught up on itself so uh, excuse my wife sneezing in the background uh, there we go, so I'll just wrap that up, pop that in there, and come back to that later. Where's the lid? There we are. Right, now the case back on this um, is slightly different to normal. 
Um, it doesn't screw, it's got four clips. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on that. There you go. Um, now if you see, you might just be able to see, maybe not on that side, but there are four little lugs inside there. And um, if I just carefully wheedle, there we go, nearly got it. Just a case of pushing against a spring um, to get it to open. Oh, can you just see that there? Just where the end of my tip of my screwdriver, that's one of the little lugs you've got to push back um, to open the case or to get the movement out. That's almost about to go. Probably a really easy way of doing this. And I'm thinking it's probably pushing on the spring through here. I'm just going to pop it down on the deck. See if I can refocus. There we go. So, so I'm learning all the time I'm doing this. Oh, nearly. Yeah, see, the trouble is, it wants to spring back every time. <laughs> Slightly larger screwdriver, I think. Ah, that's got it. Right, this is where you need three hands at least. And unfortunately, there we go. Right, so almost got it open. And it's still be misbehaving. Well, this is going to be an awkward one. So, there's a fingernail under there. There we go. Right, that's got it. No, it wasn't so uh, wasn't so difficult. So, can you see now the two lugs on that side that uh, snap into the back of the case? So we can push the movement out. And there we are. So there's two lugs go into those recesses and also those. And you can also see it's a bit grubby. So what we have is the movement in its, well, in the case back in effect. There's, uh, that's the front. So we'll um, put that to one side safely. And um, yeah, so the crystal is bit filthy um, and I'm looking for a piece of pegwood well actually not pegwood it's a um, you might recognize this it's a bamboo bamboo um, barbecue skewer so yeah filth right so what do we have uh, we have the crystal and the body of the watch so the crystal goes there now getting the movement out on this is really unusual you see this uh, let's just bring it up to the camera you see that little hole there underneath that there is a lever which allows you to pull the um, crown wheel out now on a lot of movements where you can get access to the movement through the back you would have um, a, a screw typically but not on this one so we'll put it on the on the deck oh, wrong screwdriver let's use the teeny weeny one that's, a, that's even that's too big so we'll use the little tiny one in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to put it in the movement holder because um, I need something just to hold it firmly while I faff aimlessly now the reason I'm wearing finger cots um, is purely aesthetic because uh, on a previous video I got told off for having grubby fingernails and I've been working in the garden today so they're stained, my fingers are somewhat stained so I'm just going to put a little bit of leverage on there 
and then just depress this little lever if I can get to it. That's released it, there we go. And the crown wheel is out. So this is, I'll try and focus, but I can't guarantee it will. There you go. Um, so that is the adjustment for the day and date only. And uh, it's got a tiny little o-ring gasket there to stop muck getting into the movement right so that can go into tub number three now the movement is available i could take the movement out but i'm not going to do that just immediately i'm going to take this gasket off first and i'm going to do it very carefully because i don't know whether i can get another one of these sorry i'll just keep refocusing and fortunately slipped out of the holder fortunately it looks to be in pretty good condition so just very very carefully take that off there we are okay so that can go with the uh, crown now, what I'm going to do now is take the hands off. So, what you do is to, just a little piece of plastic, and that's just like a, a little food bag, and um, hand levers I've got here. You just get underneath, get underneath this and just pop them off. And the reason for the little plastic bag, oops, it's not quite underneath, is so you don't scratch the face, which is the last thing you want to do because that's the thing that everybody sees. So there we are. Right, hands are off. Now these hands have got, oops, a luminous coating on called Loom uh, second hand. That can go in a separate one actually. Um, now, 1973, when this was made, that might actually have been radioactive. Ooh. Um, there we go, minute hand. Right, now, I can take the movement out of its, uh, out of its case. There you go. Right, and what do we have? Well, you can see the, um, let me just zoom in a bit. There you go, right. So what we have is the counterbalance weight for the, for the winder. It doesn't really want to go. So I'm just gonna use a piece of pegwood here because it's uh, a little bit more gentle. That should just wind round, that should just spin round quite happily. Oh, hello! Oh, we have a balance wheel. That's nice. Um, well, at least the balance wheel moves. So I'll just. No, yeah, that's alright. Well, the balance wheel is free. Um, I don't know whether you can see that. Let me just. 6119C. That's the movement. Right, so anyway, we're up to 20 minutes um, on this video, so it's time to finish up. The, um, the little lever I press down to release the crown is there. Now the last thing I'm going to do is to take the face off. And it's held on by two pins and screws. Uh, one there, and where's the other? Uh, I've lost it. Uh, there's another one somewhere. Right, okay. Well, I'm not going to take them out completely because they could easily get lost. Unfortunately, screws get lost very easily. And oh, there's the other one. What I'm sorry about my fingers when I've taken the face off, I must remember 
to screw these back in. Alright, so the face should come off just sweetly, and indeed it does. And there's the back of the face. Oops, and a retaining ring, plastic retaining ring, which can go in the next compartment. So the face is there we are. It's rather rather nice actually. So I'll get that by a pin. There we are. So now you can see it without the scratched crystal on, and that's quite a pretty face. Twenty one jewels. Um what does it say at the bottom? Uh, let's see if I can focus on that. I can't see that. <laughs> Golly. Oh, I'll go and find out what that says in a minute. So, uh, luminous digits. Um, so, be very careful with that. And then what that reveals is what's known uh, well, it's the calendar. And um, yes, it does say sex. Um, basically, it, it this watch was bought in Dubai. And um, it's kind of, I think it was either a, uh, an Arabic version. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but there we are. So that's as far as I'm going with this today. The next job will be to take the calendar works out and to remove the uh, auto winder weight. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, this is a journey of discovery um, because do I know what I'm doing? No, of course I don't. Um, but being careful and logical and recording each step then, you know, it should be possible to do a really good job with this watch. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let's uh, see where we get to next time.